Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, happy Wiki Tree Day. And um, I, I guess I have to introduce myself. Um, so, um, my name is Greg Clark. I'm a Wiki Tree member and an app developer. And so, for this next hour, um, those of you who are a captive audience will be part of my appetizing tour. Um, that's the, the title that I gave for, uh, for this presentation. And um, so basically, I'm just going to take you on a tour of some of the apps that I've created. And as I've teased, uh, there will be one new app that I will demonstrate at the end of all of this. So that's great. Um, so welcome to everyone. Um, we had lots of people in the chat early on. So that's great. Patricia and Kathy and um, Alesh, Lisa, John, uh, Susan, Debbie, Christine, Ms. Chica, Kay, um, Stephen, Vicky, um, and there's probably more and more will come, which I won't be able to see because I'm, as I've confessed to other people, I'm not a real, not really good at paying attention to the comments as they go whipping by while I'm, while I'm hosting. So anyways, um, I hope you enjoy this and it is meant to be interactive. So, um, I will try and, and have a, a look at the comments as we go along from time to time. Uh, so wow, people from New Zealand, from all over the place, New Zealand, Ireland, um, all over the place. Uh, so this is great. Um, so let me, uh, choo -choo -choo. uh, let us get started here. Um, and I just need to find the right window. There we go. So, uh, let me switch the view just a little bit here to do this. Uh, so this is what you signed up for. <laughs> um, and uh, so it's basically, it is going to be a wandering tour through the apps um, that I've done. And uh, so uh, you may have noted there are a number of apps that I've done. If you took part in the, uh, the trivia game at noon, uh, there's 11 listed on my uh, apps page. And we're not going to be able to go through all of the details of all of them. Um, so we're going to venture in and out of most of them. And I will try and give some of the highlights of some of those pieces and maybe show you something that you haven't seen before of all of them. Um, and uh, so you, the screen is fuzzy, you say. Can't read the words. Well, I can try and make it larger. It could have been my choice of font, too. You know, um, okay, I'm saying I'm... I don't know why it's not it's not getting any bigger. I'm not sure what well, you know what I can do. I could do this. How's that? Is that a little bit better? Uh, it could be the resolution. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, there is a place in the bottom corner when you click the settings gear to change the resolution. So you can change you can ups, upscale that. If you're only watching it at 144 P, then that's gonna be fuzzy. Um, but uh, if you increase it, then it'll be clear, but then depending on your internet connection. Uh, so that's what I would say. Um, uh, so for this, uh, we're going to be, if you want to play along and play with the apps while I'm demonstrating them, excuse me, go right ahead. Uh, the standalone apps, I have an index page, which is at this first address here. Um, apps.wikitree, and let me see if I can, I can just put that in the chat for you. Um, so let me just grab that. Uh, um, uh, la, 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 la. Uh, <laughs> no, that's not it. Um, there we are. I'll grab that. Put it in the chat for you. Um, so this is my homepage where I have listed all of my standalone apps. Um, so you can see we will be going through some of these. These are the 11 that were counted as part of that video, that uh, trivia piece. Um, and then the other apps uh, as part of Hacktoberfest, the dynamic tree apps, we will get to them. Uh, at the near the end of the presentation. Okay, so let us start out. Um, so let me go back to that page, move that over here, so things are in order. <clears throat> okay, so 
uh, on this page, I've actually organized the apps on this page, and many of my apps I have a link to um, a, a link to this. Uh, but if you're in any of my apps, so for example, this one, you just have to take off <clears throat> the, the, the file name at the end um, so that you've just got basically got the name of the directory, and then that will give you this index page. And I've got them organized uh, in uh, some logical, well, I, it's logical to me, hopefully it's logical to you um, as well. And uh, so um, the apps for viewing your trees in some type of form, uh, apps for source citations, apps to help you build prof your profiles, things you can add to your bio, and then there's a couple apps for fun. So, um, so I'm going to start off with the the very first app I ever created um, for for WikiTree was the one I called it Relative Spider Webs, um, and so the way why I did this was because um, when I discovered my biological family and I came to WikiTree to put in my family tree. Um, and I realized that uh, my mother's side was French Canadian. And as I did my research, I went back and back. And then eventually I, I connected to the family tree that was already there. Um, uh, let, me, let me just put myself in here there. Or you know what, I'll do that. There we go. There, I feel better now that I can see you guys. Um, uh, uh, eventually connected. Um, there was a lot, you know, there was a lot of people in the family tree, but being that um, all of them came from Quebec in one area, um, and they all went back to around the 1600s, there was a lot of endogamy. So there was a lot of ancestors that crossed over and over. And what I wanted to see was some way to visualize that. And so that was my idea of this Spiderwebs app. So the way you use it is uh, you put in your user ID. So you, um, I've got two there that I fill in. And then you click on it. And it chugs through and go and finds the ancestors of both of those people. And eventually it gives you a summary. So I told it to go back six generations and it found for the first person, Desiree Labonte, that at six generations, he had two ancestors who were repeated, which means that uh, these two people, Mathurin Bluda and Marguerite Poulet, um, appeared twice in his family tree somewhere. So. They, um, they're probably, they are a husband and wife who had two children and Desiree is descended from both of those children eventually. Uh, and the other person I put in, Francois-Xavier Trudel, um, he had six repeated ancestors at six generations. But what's interesting is that between the two of them, they had 16 ancestors in common with each other. And so that's what this app uh, found and then it had different ways of displaying that information. So if you clicked on one of these, uh, you could see the uh, connection from Desiree, who was born in uh, around 1880, actually 1869, I guess it looks like. Yeah, there's uh, I highlighted his name, and you can see um, you can you can see his birth and death date there in the corner. Um, Desiree down to Maturin, his ancestor. Uh, there's the two ways. So one, um, so Jean uh, Belludard, right? Had uh, Maturin had a son, Jean Baptiste, and a daughter, Marguerite, and both of those were ancestors of Desiree. So that's one way of, of viewing that information. And then you can click through here and go on. And then if you keep on clicking, then you get to see the multiple paths from the second person, who was Francois Xavier Trudel, and the different people that he's related to. And then eventually, what you get to is you can see. So here is an example of one ancestor in common between Desiree and Francois, and you can see how Jean Costet is the direct answer, the co the common past between both of those people. So um, that's that's basically what that did. And then the cool, <laughs> when you put all of that together, you get this huge sort of a kind of a mess. Um, but um, presentation of all the common ancestors, those are the ones in yellow here in the middle. And so you can see that when all of this is said and done and displayed that, that's why I gave it the name spider webs because that's kind of what it looked like, kind of a mess of webs. So that was the first one. Um, this is the first one that I had created because this was, I hadn't seen anything quite like this before um, in the relationship uh, finder you can see that you're connected, how you're connected to two people, how two people are connected to each other. And you can see if there's a number of um, 
uh, the, if there's different ancestors in common, but you couldn't visualize it like this. So that's this was the first uh, idea I had that I thought once I found out that there's a way of taking the data and programming it to be visual. Um, so this was the first of my journey. Then the second one that I did, you see, you see a bat. It does kind of look like a bat. Uh, you're right. <laughs> and you know, some may say that you know our family is a little batty. <laughs> And, uh, but there we go. And let me see, let's block this user. There we go. Oh my goodness. And did I block him? Let me make sure I'm blocking the right person, not blocking Chris. Okay, so I don't know if that guy showed up or not. Anyway. Hopefully he's gone. Um, okay, distracted. So then the second one that I did was the fractal tree. So this was a cool, when I was, uh, again, you know, doing research and whatnot, I came across this representation for a family tree, which is one I hadn't seen before. Because traditionally, like on, um, <laughs> thanks, Christy, Batman. Um, uh, <laughs> um, traditionally, you would see the pedigree chart, right? Um, and so, uh, the fan chart was just sort of had just, just sort of came out on fam on family search. Um, but then I, I came across a website, um, which had displayed a family tree like this. And the way it works is so there's me in the middle, there's my parents, my biological parents, Dwight and Pauline, and then their parents come um, expand from each side. So the parents go either horizontal or vertical. And then as you add generations to that, um, let me put my cursor on the right screen, it grows out and out and so on. So this was sort of the second one I did because I thought it was so neat. I mean, it's mathematically pleasing, it's symmetrical, it creates a fractal design, um, but it had some bugs in it. Um, so, you know, it's 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 a work in progress, um, and the reason it's not finished um, is partly because um, actually I think I I can blame Chris Ferriolo for the first challenge. He I showed him this when it was sort of in development stage, and it was you know it was it was working sometimes and wasn't working, and I showed it it was working, and he said, well that's neat, but um, you know how family history fanatics Devin Noel Lee, uh, who we were both watching. Um, on YouTube from time to time. He said, you know, she's a fan of, of the fan chart. Can you do one of those? And so at first I thought, well, that's that's pretty complicated. Nah, I don't think I should. But then uh, then I decided that maybe, maybe I could. And sort of the rest was history because then once I started, then I couldn't stop. And I abandoned the, I put the fractal tree on, on hold. Um, because much as I loved it, and I actually used it, um, when, when I did it, the names uh, were appeared. They didn't disappear from time to time like they apparently do now in the uh, presentation. Um, but I actually used the fractal tree as my record keeping as I added more generations to my, to my, um, my tree and added more people onto Wikitree because it was, it was a nice compact way of organizing the family. So, I really liked it and I, I made use of it, but I wasn't sure that it was gonna catch on in such a big way. But I did know that fan charts uh, were popular. So I thought, well, I'll try that. And so here we have the fan chart, which has by far been my most popular app on Wikitree and one which uh, many of you in the, in the chat there have uh, sent me um, uh, it messages about encouragement, bug detail, bug reports, uh, helped help me out with uh, various things, features, and also give me some nice feedback. So, I'm, so that's thank you for for all of those positive comments and all that stuff. Um, so uh, you'll see you will see the fractal tree again, Ms. Chica. So just hold on, uh, hold that thought. <laughs> it's like I'm planting these seeds. Um, so, uh, and Tommy, I see, is in the, hi, Tommy, um, is in the chat. And Tommy helped me out with this because one of the features in the fan chart is the ability to color it. So you can color it 
Um, by default here, it seems like it came out white, but I can put choose a pastel. Oh no, what happened here? Uh, ooh. It, okay, well, isn't, isn't that lovely? Don't you love when that happens in the middle of a presentation? Um, but you can change colors. Uh, now we're lost in a fog. And let's see if I can go back. Let's go back and try again. Ooh. Uh, I'm not quite sure why it's doing that for me. Uh, let's try something else. Okay, that's warm. Okay. Do, 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 assembling the fan chart. And there we have it. Um, so let's see if it will behave. I go to pastels and I go to color by generations. There we go. And I can change to blues or rainbow. Um, so Tommy, help, help me out with this coloring. Um, so sewing some glaring gaps that I need to fill in. Oh yeah, if you open up your own, you will find. And in fact, I think uh, it came out shortly before, um, like a, I officially released this shortly before one of the thons. And it really was, it is helpful to see where there are gaps in your family tree. And ideally you can fill in those gaps, but sometimes it just is a taunting uh, reminder that there's a, a brick wall that's just a little too hard to, to break down. Um, whoa, Stephen says, uh, maybe that rainbow is a little bright. Uh, so maybe I will tone down to, so let's say greens. How does it, oh, I like the greens, but we'll go back to pastels. That might be a little easier on your eyes. Um, so I added lots of options to this. Um, the, the wedding date was one of the more recent ones. Um, so I kind of like that. Though the scroll idea, um, I know some people don't like that. Uh, so I might uh, think of something new to do with that. But there's uh, lots of features here. And um, one of the things I do that uh, is really neat about this version of the fan chart is the ability to highlight um, various DNA paths. So, um, Oh, because I'm in an incognito window. That's how I got around the the uh, it not loading properly. I think there's something wrong with my cookies, and I have to reload those again. But um, uh, so there's the Y DNA path. Um, what's a little more complicated is the X chromosome path because that is um, it's not a straight path out all you know father to father to father like the Y or the mother to mother to mother, which is the mito Y DNA route. But an X chromosome uh, gets passed on from the, the mother to both her children, but the father only passes um, an X chromosome onto his daughters. So it's uh, it's not a it's not a solid wedge. Um, it's it's sort of half here, half there. It kind of makes a um, a really neat. Um, it's actually a Fibonacci sequence, which is a very cool thing. But we could get into the, all the math about that later. So maybe I will do a, a presentation on math and genealogy. Uh, uh, next year. <laughs> so there we go. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, that's one of the things you can do. And if you actually, if you show all the links, then not only does it show, can I zoom in here? Let's see. There we go. Not only does it highlight those that have an X chromosome, um, who are X chromosome ancestors, um, but it actually will link to um, the people who are X chromosome descendants. See that little, this little symbol here is the descendants tree symbol. This one up, up above is the ancestors tree. So if I click on that, I'll get the X ancestors of Marie Josephine. Dumont. If I click on this one, I'll get the descendants. And let me just do that to see how that works out. So these are all people who are descended from, uh, uh, I guess I picked Joseph David Labonte. Um, so that does include myself. And you'll see that it not only uh, shows me in the list, but it also shows that I am, I've tested 
the X chromosome. And it shows anyone else, uh, all these other people who are have WikiTree profiles that are descended, who, are, who um, inherit the X chromosome from uh, Marie-Josephine Dumont, right? Because she passed it on to her son, Joseph David Labonté, who is also my um, ancestor. No, actually, Marie Eugenie Alphonsine is my ancestor, but this is all her children. So, uh, by doing that in my chart, if I found if there was someone else besides myself who was also a WikiTree member and had tested their X chromosome and showed up here, then I could go and we could compare GEDmat GEDmatch kits, and I could actually find another cousin, and then we could use that for a DNA confirmation, for example. In fact, I did, um, shortly after I did this, added this X confirmation feature to the fan chart, I actually found two other wiki treeers that did match me. And because of the unique way of the X, con the X chromosome is passed on, I was, I was able to use that to go back an extra generation that I wouldn't normally have been able to do. So I, anyways, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, anyways. That's one of the features that you may not have explored before with the fan chart. And there are probably a few others, but we'll come back to the fan chart in a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to hide this and continue on. Um, but speaking of DNA and confirmation, uh, another um, uh, app that I created is the DNA Confirmation Citation Maker app. So, um, the uh, if one of the great things about the wiki tree is the ability to include information about the DNA test that you've taken. And just as I demonstrated there with the X chromosome, which is one of the more difficult ones to, um, you know, get your head around and figure out who are matches and who's eligible to be a match and who you should test and whatnot. Um, uh, you can verify uh, or confirm uh, your ancestry, your, your parents, grand, or grandparents, and all that sort of stuff, um, if you have DNA matches. Um, so a simple DNA match would be used if you, there we go, uh, if you find someone who's third cousin or closer. So if you have a match on ancestry, my heritage, 23andMe, um, I missed one of them, family tree DNA, um, any of those sites, uh, if it's third cousins or closer, um, then you can verify um, that you are related, uh, you verify that your genealogy on paper matches your genealogy DNA results. And then that's an op that's something that you can add to your profile. So if I were to put down, um, let me see here, let me go, Douglas, uh, which one of these is the one I want now? Yes, this one here. Okay, so actually, this is my. Hmm, so I want I want Fred. Eh, I don't remember what his is. Um, so I put in my wiki tree ID, and I put in uh, someone else who's related. Now this is actually a great grand uncle. I don't actually have his DNA because that's a little far, he passed away a little too <laughs> too far back. Um, but for the for this demonstration, you can see how this will work. So then um, you, um, you, uh, let's see, you, can, you have to answer three questions here because before you can actually confirm that you're related in DNA, there, you have to make sure that, it's, that you've got all the details, um, you've done the traditional genealogy, that you're not just picking names out of a hat, you know, that just because he says, yeah, and you say, oh, yeah, probably. You'd, need to, you'd actually do need to have the sources to, to back it up on paper. Uh, the, de the DNA testing company, Ancestry or MyHeritage or wherever, has to say, yes, your match is close enough that it's you know third cousin or closer. Um, and then, uh, yes, and does it correspond? You'll say yes to all that. And then you put down the details of where it was. I'm just going to say this. Uh, let's see. Um, on three segments, let's say, and we'll say that was uh, it was great. Uncle. 
So then what this app does then is it assembles the confirmation statement. And so um, the confirmation statement the sort for, for your source citation, um, let me just move that over a bit so you can read that. It's a little complicated. I, I mean, it looks complicated because it has to pack so much information in there um, uh, so that for that other people can verify um, that it's, it's valid. Um, it has to say where the information came from. So in this case, it came from an ancestor DNA test. Who the people are that did the DNA testing, so that would be myself and my great grand uncle Richard. Um, and then it has to say, well, how are they related? And so it has to claim or has to state who the ancestors are. And I didn't type in when William Douglas or Mary Bigger, um, but the app found that connection because I am and Richard were both on WikiTree. So it just traveled through the through the um, through the ether there, found that connection and put that in for us. Um, and then it also has to put down the results like to verify what ancestry what the dna matching company says so that, that you can verify that that was and so that's that information that i just did in the last last one so now what do you do with that well what you do with that is you copy that information so it's copied all of that data into your clipboard and you have to put it into your profile and so uh in your profile there's a part there where um, where your father and your mother are, and there are buttons to d determine whether uh, they are certain, uncertain, confident, or confirmed by DNA. And so, confirmed by DNA is that is that high the highest level there, and that's what we are confirming with this. We say our we've done a DNA test, and these two people are definitely related to each other. Um, and so, this is the citation, or this is the proof of that, and so with the app then you can go straight to herbert's page so here's the instructions we're going to add the dna confirmation for william and millary who are the parents mother and father father and mother of herbert so we'll go to his page go to edit and so there we go so the instructions were and i can act can i go back one there's the instructions it opened up a new tab so you can always go back to the instructions and follow it step by step if especially if this is the first time you've done something like this, you wanna be able to sort of follow it step by step. So I went to Herbert's page, check. Mark relationship as confirmed with DNA, check and check. And the next step is add the source citation underneath the sources section. So I'll scroll down here and there's a nice bio. I did a nice bio for all those. I added some census. Eventually, I'll get to, there we go, there's sources. Sources section, I actually put a subsection for DNA, and there are my, my confirmations. So I've already done this with, um, with other actual relatives and not, uh, not my great-great-granduncle, which is obviously too far away to do a, a real one. So um, that is the DNA confirmation app in a nutshell. Um, there are, if you go back to the main menu of this one, so I just took you through how to do a simple DNA uh, match, uh, which is the one that you most of you will probably do and start off with. But um, uh, if you want, if you need to go further, if you want to go further back to verify that your your um, so the third cousins will take you to your great great grandparents. But if you want to go a few greats beyond that, then you need to triangulate it because the amount of DNA that you share is a lot less and so you need to um to triangulate with a uh three or three or four three or more people and so you use that and there's also a way to do specialty matches um on your male line your female line or using that xdna um confirm uh, chromosome that we talked about earlier so uh, there we go. Uh, that was a very quick tour of the DNA uh, confirmation one. So uh, let's move on to, um, so since we're talking about source, um, adding source citations and adding things to your, your bio, um, I did create two apps uh, that will help you build up your bio. And one of them is the surnames generator. This was an idea I got from Mags, uh, Mags Galden. Uh, she 
has um, she had already done this on her pro, uh, WikiTree profile page, um, and she 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 did it on she did it on others, and she suggested that something like this would be really useful for lots of people. So she challenged me to build something like this. So I'm going to go, let's say, eight generations out, um, and generate a surname to this. So what it's going to do is it's oh I uh, don't like that. Oh there we go. It's building. Okay, um, it's going through my ancestors and finding all of the surnames up to eight generations out. And it builds the little list as it's going, so that you know it's doing something. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have taken eight because eight's going to take a while. Looks like we got forty-three at two hundred fifty-six. Oh, this is going to. Oh, and it's done. Hmm. There we go. Um, so then there is the list. So you can just copy that again. Gives you, I, I, I do that pop up so that you know something has happened. Um, uh, now, if the pop up doesn't work, like say if, if you have a pop up blocker and you don't see that pop up in front of you, um, then I built in another way around that because just like in the DNA confirmation app, you see, there was that area where you that text box, uh, you can do that here as well. The thing is, the text box does not look nearly as pretty as the actual. Um, output of the app. So I hide it by default because it looks kind of ugly. Um, but if if your pop-up blocker stops that, then um, you can just put your cursor in here and use it, either drag it around or what I often do is I use a shortcut. So on my Mac, that's Command A will automatically highlight everything inside a text field. Um, but uh, uh, on a Windows machine, it's uh, I think it's Control A. So, <laughs> Steve, yeah, that's wiki markup in a nutshell. So you copy that, and then you can go back to your person, uh, and you can edit. Uh, I'm going to put it right at the very bottom so we know where to look for it. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, workshop, workshop demo stuff. And I'm going to paste it in here. And we hit, I'm going to hit preview. And workshop demo stuff. Let me go down there. So there we are. There's my surnames. So see how that it looks. It looks very much like what uh, oh, no, that looks like. Um, but of course, I wasn't satisfied with stopping there. Um, I thought, well, what if you wanted more details? So I take each of those each of those surnames, find the earliest occurrence of that uh, surname and gave her birth date and then up to hmm, up to uh, oh let me think uh, wait a second. no the first occurrence up to the most recent to the furthest back right yes because Ayot that's right that's that only goes I don't see Ayot's until I get to my great great greats right so if I went down to Douglas uh, there, I see the first occurrence. The first time I see Douglas in my family tree is my biological father, Dwight. There we go. And the last Douglas that I have on record is my great 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 William in 1801 in Ireland. That's a brick wall. I'd love to go back. I think he's actually, I suspect he's Scots Irish with a name like Douglas. He's probably from his, his forebears are probably from Scotland, but I haven't found that connection yet. Um, but if you look at any of these French ones, they go way back, 1600, 1540. That might be one of the earliest ones, the Cloutier. Um, so just you can do the same thing, but you could copy that and put that in if you wanted to. It. Um, the other thing that someone asked um, was, well, what if I want to put it in a blog post or on my family tree or on a family website somewhere? So um, then I've got an HTML version. So you can copy the HTML or you can show the HTML, do the same sort of thing, and you see. Uh, there's um, HTML code, which will do the same thing. So you can copy that, paste that to your blog, and show it off. Uh, and all, the, all of these, the default is black and white because that's probably the easiest to see. But if you want to fancy up a bit, you can color it paternal, maternal, or four colors by the four grandparents. Paternal grandfather, grandmother, maternal grandfather, grandmother. Um, sort it that way by color, sort it by generation. Anyways, 
lots of different ways to slice and dice the surname. So feel free to add that. Um, so another, oh, the earliest known. <laughs> um, so anyways, that's kind of a cool one. Um, the other one that uh, would help you uh, would be if this worked. Um, earliest known ancestor. Come on. Uh, chart goes here. Hmm. Let's go new. Oh, okay. Uh, so you click on that, and it, what it should do is go back through, um, and this will find your earliest known male ancestor and your earliest known female ancestor, if it's working. Uh, and it's been a while since I've tried this one, so maybe we come back to that and see how it does afterwards. <laughs> okay. Um, so those were, uh, those were apps for, um, I also have built some apps. I'm not going to actually demonstrate those ones right now. Um, uh, but I have some apps to help you build other type of citations. So we went through, I showed you the DNA citation maker. Um, but, uh, the Durand, um, uh, the, the Duran is a website for Quebec genealogy. And so some of the, um, I have a way of creating specific citations for that from the Duran collection. Duran collection. Um, I also have a tool that generates citations for ancestry.com. Um, and I did this before the Wikitree Sorcerer uh, extension was available. Um, but it's actually much easier to use than mine. I hate to say that, but it's true. Um, so I've been using um, the sourcer's <laughs> citation um, uh, extension more often, but this one still works if you if you wanted to go into it. Um, and then I built a special, so there's that one. And so the way this one works, you filled it, you copy things from, the, from your ancestry record. Um, and it's a matter of copying a bunch of stuff uh, and then hitting compile citation and it creates the citation for you, which you can then copy and paste back into, into your Wikitree profile. But uh, it works a little, it actually works smoother with the extension. So, um, where did that go? Um, oh, there we go. Um, I also built a specialty one um, for the Antonati website, which is an Italian uh, site for um, records, birth, marriage, death records. Um, yeah, it, it ancestry still work. The citation ancestry citation does still work. Um, and until the other one came along, I think a lot of people were, were using it. So it is helpful because the one thing it does allow you to do is to, to link to um, images so that even non ancestry users can at least see the uh, pick an image of the source document. So that's kind of neat. Uh, let's see, did the EA, the AK, EKA apparently is not going to work, but if I go back to my profile, let me go to my profile. I can show you what it should look like when it's working. <laughs> uh, or did I, yeah, there we are, earliest known ancestors. So this is the type of thing that it should do. So I'm going to have to investigate why that, um, why that's not working. Um, so in the beginning of this year, one of the apps um, that I was sort of dreaming about and started playing around with, but then um, what I call it my, uh, I call it my Wibney. Um, that's the, wouldn't it be nice if, uh, no, I'm gonna go back to there. Um, Wibney, a Wib, a Wibney is, is a term I use for wouldn't it be nice if something would be. So the Wix, the Six Degrees app uh, was sort of one that um, came from, uh, I wanted to see how people were connected, sort of a visual clue of how people are connected. And so when the Wikitree challenge came around and that was sort of how they had changed their scoring for that, um, 
I thought, well, that's a perfect opportunity. Well, I guess I better get to work and, and make this a, a reality, not just a dream. So that's where the idea for the Six Degrees app came. And of course, like within a week of doing this, then all of a sudden they decided, well, let's do a CC7 score. So I had to go up to, uh, it wasn't bad enough that I had gone to six, I had to go now to seven <laughs> degrees. But anyways, we got there. Um, and thank you for some, those of you who um, voted on the poll to determine what the color was going to be for degree seven, but that was kind of cool. Um, so we have it there. And you, so you can see each one of those dots is someone who is um, connected to me in some form or another. And you can change to represent by initials or like first initial, all the initials or even first name. And I also have built in um, the ability to for privacy to um, hide or to sh privatize um, uh, people who are living. I'm just going to go to privatize. And I also built it in so that you could show uh, right current by the default. If you if you have the adoption template on your profile, then it will pu pull in your adoptive family, as well as your biological family, which for me is a true fact. And so it's right now showing both. I can change it so it only shows my adoptive family, um, or I can change it so it only shows my biological family, which because of all those Quebecois is much larger. <laughs> also, I don't have, I haven't uh, fully put in all of my adoptive family because I joined Wikitree specifically to have a place to put my biological family. So that's why that one is larger. Um, and if you were looking at just one of them, uh, one of the options I have is to compact the rings. So right now it's off, that's with a little X, but if I click that, then what it does is it um, it fills in the spaces basically um, as much as it can. Um, so there we go. Then I just thought, well, now that I've got all these names, kind of makes sense to turn them into a family tree. So I did that. And so you can build this really humongous uh, family tree chart. Um, and if I ch go back and add everyone back into it, uh, so that's biological and adoptive, then you get this massive family tree chart, which is, I think, really cool. Um, and so you can you could print this out for family reunions. <laughs> I'm just glancing over the chat. Lord of the Rings. Okay, I'll take that title. <laughs> um, uh, and again, so I had it on set to first names only in the previous one. But one of the options, if you really want to get serious about a family tree chart for a family reunion, then you're going to want to change it to all information, which will be first and last name. And then you're going to get something that looks like this. Now, when I say all information, again, it's first and last name and birth and death years. It, uh, and marriage years. Marriage, see, there's the marriages in there too. Um, because there's only so much paper in the world for you to print on. Um, you see how Maria Brunet has got that little highlight around her? That means, so she is a repeat ancestor. Or she, re she appears more than once on this chart. If I click on that, you can see how she shows up twice, how she's related to me in at least or connected to me in two ways, actually related in this case. So she is a, uh, let's see, uncle, cousin, I guess, first cousin, sometimes removed. Josephine's first cousin. So first cousin, one, one, two, three, four times removed. I know, and she's on my biological family side. Um, also, she's also married to a great grand uncle. Great, great grand uncle, uh, uh, father, grandfather, great, great, great uncle. Yes. Okay. There we have it. Um, and if I slide over here, I'm going to get onto my adoptive side. And so if I eventually, come on, where's the adoptive side? The adoptive side is hiding on me. Or maybe it's on the other side. Somewhere here. Anyways, you'll have to trust me on that. Um, okay. 
Uh, so let's slip over to um, the dynamic tree and the stuff we did on Hacktoberfest. So, um, and to get to the dynamic tree, you can all do that because now it's been enabled. So if you are on your, any Wikitree page, um, if you go to your, um, go to the Wikitree ID menu item. So that's the one that has your Wikitree ID or the Wikitree ID of whatever, per, whoever you are viewing and slide down, excuse me, to the uh, option that says dynamic tree and click on that then you will be taken to the dynamic tree. And it has, um, because of the, the way it works, it remembers where you were last. So again, probably not a shocker to you. Uh, I was last looking at the fan chart. And so there it is. And now the way all of these, uh, the views work on this uh, dynamic tree is, uh, so the stuff up top is sort of the, is the uh, common header. And in that, you can change the central person, the focus, um, by just typing in a new uh, ID. And then you can choose the view that you want to look at. So there are currently 10 different views. And if you watch or rewatch the um, 10 o'clock panel that we did, we actually showed um, each of those. And three of these are ones that I've created, um, which I'm going to show you briefly. And one of them is this fan chart. Um, so you can change it to a different one and hit go, and then it'll reformat using that other view. But down below is the actual chart. And if it's a graphical one in nature like this one, then you can zoom in and out and slide it around using your mouse or your, um, on a mobile, use your fingers. Um, it's not, uh, it works okay. Um, but some, uh, it's a little, um, I don't know what the best word to describe it, a little sticky. It's not totally mobile friendly. Um, you can manipulate it, um, but sometimes it's, it doesn't, it doesn't move as easily. So that's one of the things that we are going to work on is to make it a little bit, um, slicker on a mobile device. But anyway, the fan chart app here works very, uh, is very similar to the one that the standalone one that I, I just showed you and the one that's still up and running. Um, but, uh, and I've got, if the gears here are the settings, I haven't added all the features from the original one into this one yet, but I, my plan is to do that. So all the stuff that works in the old one, will get into this new one eventually. And um, uh, and maybe even some more features. In fact, there are some more features because Kay, who is in the chat, has already suggested that um, along with highlighting by DNA, uh, another feature would be nice would be to highlight um, profiles that uh, have biocheck errors in them or in or other criteria. So that is uh, something to look forward to. So uh, again, you can change whether you're going to full circle, semicircle. These icons are, work the same sort of way. And here's the ones to go up in a generation or down a generation. Uh, the Spiderwebs app, the very first one I told you about, the very first one that I had envisioned I have redone for the dynamic tree. And I kind of think it looks nicer. Uh, if you look, go back into that very first app, it kind of looks, I mean, it works, but it's kind of, I don't know, um, you know, good first effort, but this looks a lot slicker. I think it looks a lot slicker anyways. Um, and so here I have done, um, I've gone up to 11 generations. And so at 11 generations, I have 84 repeat ancestors. Um, and so this is the full pedigree tree. And if I zoomed out so you could see it, you can see it's pretty wide. But one of the options is to choose just the repeat. So this, this view of it doesn't show every ancestor. It only shows the ones that lead up to those who are repeat. So let me just focus on this, this little chunk here, for example. So see, P.S., who is Pierre Sauvé, um, uh, is the uh, father of Marie-Angélique Sauvé, who is the mother of François-Marie Daoust, who had two children, or at least two children. There might be a third line there that um, who descend to me. So, And then you can actually see the single, uh, okay, where to go? There we are. 
over here. So the same sort of idea as the previous app, but a little bit clearer. Um, let me do this so you can see a little bit better. Um, so again, you can scroll through and see how different people are related multiple ways. Now, I haven't enabled these ones here, but I'm the idea is that when this one is added, then you can add then you can add that second person. So you can see how two people are related. And I'm thinking I should be able to get it to work so I, you could have up to four people and see how the four of them are interrelated and their common ancestors. So that's something to look forward to. Uh, the other thing I've done is the fractal tree, which is the that other one that was kind of janky and worked sometimes. And <laughs> when I showed you and went multiple generations, you only saw the colored outlines. Well, this is what it really should look like. And I'm happy that it does work better this way. So there's me, there's my biological parents, there's their parents, and so on, and so on. And they told two friends, and they told two friends, and so on, and so on. And I've also put that little warning there so that it, as it's loading, you know that, oh, it's something to, so there we go. So that's that's the, the working fractal tree. So someone, I think it was Ms. Uh, Ms. something or other, um, had asked about that. And yes, it is working. And so you can check that out. So that is what, um, what I've got. But in the last nine minutes, let me show you something new. So you, I, if you want to play around and I play along, and I hope you do, um, I want you to open up a second browser. Um, either a second, second browser window, don't shut this down because you'll lose me then, uh, but a second browser window or, or, or an iPad or whatever, or you can just watch if you like. Um, um, but do so and then go to your dynamic tree. So from your profile, go to dynamic tree. And if it's not on fan chart, go to your fan chart and click go. because <laughs> I've embedded a secret button in the fan chart to get to my new app, okay? And here's how you get there for now. Um, I think I just love launch another app. Uh, you go to your the central person in your fan chart, click on the person so you get the, the pop-up and there's a button there that says play Fandoku. And you will be taken to the brand new app, which is a Fandoku game. So, Fandoku, you say, what's Fandoku? Well, Fandoku is a hybrid. It is a fan chart and a Sudoku game in one. Uh, so, the way it works is you are given a fan chart. And it has random ancestors all around it your random ancestors, in fact. Um, and the goal is to fill in the names in the proper place in the fan chart. So let me demonstrate. I'm going to actually go down a generation. <laughs> yes, Steve, guilty as charged. I am a nerd and proud of it. So I'm going to go down three generations so it's really fast to, to demonstrate. So. When I hit start, I'm just going to use the, actually, I'm going to go down to, I'm um, changed to zero. Uh, I'm going to start the game. Actually, you know, I can leave it as there. I'm going to start the game. And, oh, there we go. So by default, it gives you one freebie. So it gave me my grandmother, Marie-Berthe Germain. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you. Um, and then I have to fill in the rest. So Dwight is highlighted here. So I know he is my biological father. So if I click on that, there he goes. And then I can click on William. And there, Pauline is my biological mother. I'll put her. Yay! It's clapping for me because I filled in a whole generation. Well, it's the parents' generation. So this is not, this is not overly challenging. But uh, once I fill in the grandparents' generation, it would clap again. And it's going to cheer because I've won the game. <laughs> so you can see there's a score, there's a timer. 
So, and it tells you how many ancestors you placed and if you missed. So I must have clicked on something by mistake at one point. Um, I think maybe when I was dragging it around, it registered, um, uh, it registered that uh, I clicked somewhere else. So we can play again. Um, I can go up. Uh, I've built it so far to go only as high as five generations because um, that's, so there's eight, no, six, six spots, then 14 spots then 30 spots to fill. Um, so I thought 30 is probably um, far enough uh, to fill in. But um, I mean, I can add more if that's uh, something that you want. Uh, Karen, that is, oh, wait a second. My cursor's over on the wrong screen. Um, do, 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 do. Karen has an excellent comment. Great things for grandkids to play. Hopefully they will like it. Um, so you could start with that uh, if I hit start. And actually you can fill in, oh, Chris is the wrong key. Let me fill in two. And I'm going to click on the show gender colors in the cell. So what that does is it pre, it, um, it pre shades them either pink or, or light blue, whether they're male or female, to sort of give you a little bit of a hint. Oh, you won, Stephen, yay! <laughs> um, how are we doing for time? Okay, I still have some time. Um, uh, so there we go. It's going to fill in two there, and then I can start filling in the rest. Um, and uh, where does she go here? Nope, there. There we go. And if you have pictures, it'll put pictures in um, and all the rest. So now uh, I'm not going to do this full game because it's going to take too long. But let me go back. Oh, I could have gone... Um, if you are, if you get stuck, or if your grandkids are playing and they get frustrated and they don't know where people go, then you, if you hit end game, it'll automatically fill everything in. Say, I uh, hope you come back again. Try again soon. Game over. And there's your complete fan chart, color coded and everything. Um, so, we were playing in traditional fan chart mode, but we want to step it up a level. We want to go into Fandoku mode. So. Follow along here. So I'm going to start. I'm going to make it. Let's go down to four generations, and uh, we can let fill in two. And I'm going to leave the gender coloring in so you can see how this works. So in Fandoku mode, um, okay. So there's all the people. Um, it's filled in two of my ancestors. It's filled in a grandfather and a great grandmother. Now in a traditional fan chart, it always goes father, mother, then father, mother, father, mother, order. In Fandoku mode, the ordering is random. Now it's consistent within a generation. So in this generation here, um, Joseph Eli Marcu uh, is obviously the father of this person here. And I know that his wife was uh, Germaine, Marie Bergen. So I'm going to put her in there. And I know it's going to be consistent that if because he's father, mother, this will be father, mother. So this is going to be um, William Norman Lionel D D Douglas and his wife, who was Margaret Ashley Overland. Yeah, I completed a generation. I got a clap. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, and then so on. So I can fill the rest of those in. Uh, nope. Uh, oh, oh. oh, right. I, you know what? I just got it wrong because I forgot. <laughs> I wasn't reading the color coding. The, this, this ring goes mother, father, mother, then father, and so on. So uh, Caldwell is going to go here. Dwight goes down here. Uh, anyways, you get the idea, right? Right? Uh, let's, let me finish this because I just want to do that. Um, and Joseph goes here. I must be missing someone. Oh, there we are. Donna. Doop. Donna. Oh, Donna. Come on, where are you? And who else am I missing? Oh, there's one hide hiding about up, up there. And there you go. Yay! Okay. Yeah. So that's what it's. There we go. So if you really want a test, then you could put it down to one 
pre-filled ancestor, turn off the gender hinting, and there you go. You're stuck with, okay, you're given one person's name. So what I know from that is, um, uh, what I know from that is that uh, this, it's going to be father, mother, then father, mother, going backwards, father, mother, father, mother. Um, if I know this couple and I know who their descendant is, who is my ancestor, then I can fill in that name. And that'll tell me the order in which the parents go, whether it's father first, then mother, or mother first, then father, and so on. So you can work back. So there's a number of different strategies you could use, but there you go. So if you want to start again, Debbie, you just click, you could just end game and then hit play again. And every time you play it, re it randomly shuffles the ordering of the generations. But um, anyways, there you go. So I'm about to, I'm about to click here and actually create a pull request. In fact, I'm going to, you can, you can see me do it right now. There we go. It's now going to be, okay. So now Brian, who is the head of this, is going to get that message to say, add this to the tree. So for now, you all know the secret path to get in. You go to the fan chart, uh, go to the fan chart, click on the central person and click play Fandoku. But eventually it will become, it will be in the list just like with the rest of them. Uh, wait a second, where was it here? Where where did my where did it go? Do, 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 do. Okay. Uh, anyways, it'll be in the it will be in the list with the rest of the uh carrying inventory. So there you have it. Um so uh, I think I have gone over by a, a couple minutes. So sorry for keeping you late for supper. But um, that was the brand new game app that uh, we did. And uh, Mindy, I guess I have to give you a private tutorial. She said she just missed it. <laughs> Hope you enjoy that. And um, I'll see you around. So thanks for all your support and uh, playing with the apps. And if you have other suggestions, um, you can always uh, send, me a, send me an email or a message on uh, G2G or on my profile, private one. Um, contact any of the, the tech team or the developers if you have other ideas for other views, other things to do. And thanks very much. Now, let me just get my cursor over here and I can play us out. Um, have a great day, everyone. Happy Wiki Tree Day. <laughs>